The Beautiful Teachings of Islam Part 4 Islam has unique moral teachings that call for strengthening the relationship between humans and their Lord, as well as with one another. They also call for us to correct and improve ourselves, both inwardly and outwardly. 3.1 Relationship with the Lord In the Quran, Allah calls us to correct and strengthen our relationship with Him and to draw close to Him through spiritual and physical acts of worship such as prayer, Hajj Hajj. The major pilgrimage to the sacred mosque, site of the Kaaba in Makkah, to be undertaken by every able Muslim once in his or her lifetime, supplication, and charity. In addition, the Quran calls us to seek knowledge about Allah through His names and attributes. This instills fear and awe of the Lord in our hearts and establishes discipline in applying Allah's commands and prohibitions. The Prophet also instructed us to remember Allah at all times and in every situation. This creates a permanent connection between our Lord and us, and it instills stability, strength and tranquility in our hearts. It is one means of protecting against evil and vice, since Muslims will be reminded constantly that Allah is watching our every action. The Prophet blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, for example, taught specific invocations to be uttered when going to sleep, before entering the lavatory, before sexual intercourse. While traveling, when in a state of fear, upon entering or leaving one's house, the first thing in the morning and in the afternoon, when afflicted by distress, anxiety, or misfortune. When burdened by debt or poverty, upon entering a graveyard, when stopping for a rest or setting up camp, and in many other situations. 3.2 Relationships with people in general The Quran promotes behavior that strengthens and reinforces social relationships, for example, it places great importance on the role of the family. Treating parents kindly, maintaining good relations with other family members, seeing to the rights and needs of spouses and children and dealing with them with love and mercy. And supporting orphans and the weaker members of society are all obligatory. Conversely, disobeying parents, severing family ties, neglecting or abusing spouses and children, and isolating oneself are all prohibited. In addition, the Quran teaches that we should treat others with high moral behavior and noble manners. We are encouraged to smile, forgive, return harm with good, and have patience when dealing with others. Since this high code of moral behavior can be quite trying, Allah has promised immense rewards for those who achieve it. The Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, instructed us to adopt good manners when in gatherings, such as not raising our voices, respecting elders, being gentle with youngsters, and greeting those present by saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, may the peace, mercy and blessings of Allah be upon you. Islam also demands that we guard our tongues against saying negative things about others, even if what we want to say is true. Islam also enjoins that agreements and contracts be fulfilled, entrusted items returned, and rulers obeyed. It enjoins noble characteristics just as it forbids vileness, baseness, crime, oppression, hostility, aggression, and all other blameworthy and reprehensible qualities. 3.3 Relationships with Parents Islam highly recommends kindness to parents. This command is mentioned eight times in the Quran. In one of the verses, Allah said to Prophet Muhammad, Blessings and peace of Allah be upon him. And your Lord has decreed that you not worship except him, and to parents, good treatment. Whether one or both of them reach old age while, with you, say not to them, so much as, oof, and do not repel them, but speak to them a noble word. And lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy and say, My Lord, have mercy upon them as they brought me up, when I was, small. Quran 17, 23-24A man asked Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, whom should I honor? Most. The Prophet replied, your mother. The man asked, and who comes next? The Prophet answered, your mother. The man inquired again, and who comes next? The Prophet responded, your mother. The man queried again, and who comes next? The Prophet replied, your father. Recorded by Bukhari and Muslim. 3.4 Relationships with other relatives. Kindness towards relatives has been promoted by most major religions, but Islam takes this aspect to a new dimension. We are obliged to assist our relatives through economic as well as social means. Relatives have specific rights laid out by the Sharia, Islamic law, these are based on the nearness of the blood relationship. This can be seen mostly in the rights of inheritors, which are specifically laid out in the Quran. Certain relatives receive shares of the inheritance, and a Muslim may bequeath up to one-third of the estate to relatives, or others, who are not assigned a share. When it comes to charity, one must fulfill the rights of relatives before donating money to others, so that members of one's own family are not forced to go elsewhere to seek help. Muslims must treat all relatives, whether or not they are Muslims, with utmost respect and kindness, they must not boycott their relatives or cut off relations with them. They are encouraged to stay in contact even if these relatives abandon them. Indeed, maintaining family ties is of such great importance that Muslims are rewarded greatly for any good actions that promote this. 3.5 Relationships with Neighbors Islam encourages treating neighbors very kindly. There is a verse in the Quran that sums this all up. And to parents do good, and to relatives, orphans, the needy, the near neighbor, the neighbor farther away, the companion at your side, the traveler. Quran 4, 36. Also, the Prophet said, 
the angel, Gabriel continued to urge me to treat neighbors kindly and politely, to the extent that I thought he would order me to make them my heirs. Recorded by Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, also said. Anyone who believes in Allah on the last day should not harm his neighbor, and anyone who believes in Allah on the last day should entertain guests generously. And anyone who believes in Allah on the last day should say what is good or keep quiet. Recorded by Bukhari and Muslim. Remember, kindness to neighbors is rewarded by Allah. 3.6 Food, Moral Conduct the Prophet taught many practical good manners, including the virtue of adopting the correct manners for eating and drinking. These include eating with your right hand and being satisfied with the food rather than finding fault with it. If you like the food, you should eat it, but if you have no appetite for it, simply leave it in the dish without criticizing it. This is both out of respect for the blessing of the food and in order to avoid hurting the feelings of the person who has cooked and or offered it. It is also preferred to eat with others and not alone, either by eating with your family or by inviting a poor person to join you. Say Bismillah, in the name of Allah, I start, before beginning to eat, and say Alhamdulillah, all praises due to Allah after the meal. In order to remember the blessing that you have been given and also the one who provided it. The Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him prohibited people from blowing on food or drink or breathing onto it. Out of respect for others who may be sharing it and to avoid the spread of contagious diseases. 3.7 Hygiene, Islamic Moral, Conduct. Islam also enjoins both physical and spiritual cleanliness. It encourages us to keep our bodies clean, along with our clothes and shoes. Islam has guided Muslims for our own well-being, down to the minute details. For example, we are encouraged to wash thoroughly after using the toilet, to clean the teeth often, especially with the siwak, a natural toothbrush, and to shower after having sexual relations. 3.8 Spiritual, Islamic Moral Conduct In regard to spiritual purity, the Quran instructs us to straighten and correct our souls and to purify our hearts from spite, malice, jealousy, pride, and inequity. The Quran calls for integrity of the heart and for love, affection, and humility towards people. It instructs us to purify our tongues from lying, backbiting, slander, and insult, and the enormity of such sins is emphasized in many of its verses. Chapter 104, The Slanderer, is dedicated to slander and backbiting, which should be replaced by truthfulness and softness in speech. Islam encourages unity, so much so that we should give as many excuses as we can for suspected bad behavior or speech on the part of fellow Muslims. The wealth, property, and life of a Muslim are held sacred, no one has the right to interfere with these without the individual's express permission. We should restrain our eyes from looking at what they are not. Entitled to, such as the private parts of others, and we should keep our ears from listening to loose and immoral talk, including lewd song lyrics. The Quran praises and encourages knowledge and criticizes ignorance, saying that it leads to destruction. It commands people to action and dynamism, while prohibiting wasteful talk and laziness. 3.9 Family Structure and Rights Islam teaches that children should be born within illegal marriage and that sexual desire should be controlled and contained within these parameters. To uphold the family structure and the well-being of society, the Quran prohibits fornication because it is one of the worst assaults on a person's honor and dignity. It can cause disease and produce children who are looked upon by society as illegitimate. Likewise, the Quran forbids everything which leads to fornication. So it prohibits behavior like looking at pornographic pictures and being alone with members of the opposite sex who are not marams marum, a man with whom marriage is not permitted. For example, a woman's brother or father. non marum men are those whom the woman is permitted to marry. It also commands that men lower their gaze and not look or stare at women whom they have no right to look at. Muslim women thus enjoy protection and security and can be confident that Muslim men will not even look at them if they are not permitted to. Likewise, women should not gaze at men. Unlawfully. 3.10 Decency and Veiling With this same reasoning, Islam enjoins morality and behavior and appearance. Fashions that reduce women to sex objects are not acceptable, and Islamic veiling is a means of protection from unwanted external attention. Allah says in the Quran, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to bring down over themselves, part, of their outer garments. That is more suitable that they will be known and not be abused. Quran 33, 59. In the privacy of their own homes and in the presence of their husbands, when they will receive only the type of attention they desire, women may wear whatever they wish. 3.11 The rights of the wife. Islam urges men to be kind to their wives. Allah says in the Quran, He created for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them, and He placed between you affection and mercy. Quran 30, 21. Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, said, The best of you are those who are kindest to their wives. Recorded by Ibn Majah with a sound chain of narration. Some people are kind in public where everyone is watching, yet they are mean and cruel at home. Islam holds Muslims accountable even in this situation, where their true nature may be revealed. This is the true test of moral behavior. In Islam, the wife retains her independent legal status and family name. She is not the property of her husband in any way, but she has many rights due from him, as he does from her.
the husband must give his wife a gift at the time of marriage, and this is hers to keep even if she is later divorced. The wife does not give a dowry to the husband, and she is never obliged to act as a co-provider for the family, although she may do so voluntarily. It is the husband's sole responsibility to support his family financially. Islam gives women, whether married, divorced, or single, the right to inherit and own property and to conduct business. 3.12 Polygyny Polygyny, a man's having more than one wife, is permitted in Islam, especially to alleviate social problems such as the plight of orphans and widows who need support. It is also a way to safeguard honesty and matrimonial trustworthiness especially within the family, for those who have a desire or need for more than one sexual partner. Instead of having an extramarital affair, the man is required to take responsibility for his actions. Islam limits polygyny to a maximum of four wives at one time, and it requires the husband to treat them equally, caring for his wives financially and emotionally in the exact same manner. It should be noted that if a woman is unhappy in this situation, and she fears that she will be unable to fulfill her responsibilities to her husband as well as to Allah, she can opt out of the marriage. A man is not allowed to force his wife to stay married. 3.13 Divorce Rules Islam is a religion of moderation. Although divorce is allowed when necessary, family unity is encouraged. For example, in the event of a divorce, the two spouses are encouraged to bring arbitrators from their family members to help reconcile them. Islam discourages divorce, yet it recognizes the rights of both partners to end their matrimonial relationship if circumstances dictate it. Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him said, A believing man should not hate a believing woman. If he dislikes one of her traits, he will be pleased with another, recorded by Muslim. Therefore Islam is realistic about the option of divorce, but it also encourages attempts to resolve any conflicts and hold the marriage together. 3.14 Protection of Life the Quran also calls for the protection and sanctity of human life, specifically mentioning that the taking of an innocent life is one of the worst and most hideous crimes. The Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, forbade breaking the bones of a dead person, so what about the taking of an innocent life? The Quran prescribes a life for a life and an eye for an eye for all killings and injuries, large or small, respectively. Unless the victims or their families agree to accept financial compensation. Instead, 3.15 Protection of Property the Quran declares that a person's property and wealth are safe and inviolable, therefore, it prohibits theft, bribery, usury, and deception. It calls for moderation in spending. Hence, it forbids extravagance, lavishness, and squandering money, while at the same time forbidding the hoarding and amassing of wealth. It calls for balance people should neither be greedy, stingy, and covetous nor extravagant and wasteful. It encourages people to seek their livelihoods and provisions through lawful activities that bring financial or material benefit to all parties concerned, such as buying, selling, and leasing. 3.16 Animal Rights the Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, ordered that animals be treated fairly and with kindness, instructing that they should be fed and given water. He promised that such actions would be rewarded on the day of resurrection. He also instructed that they should not be made to carry a burden more than they can bear, tormented or caused undue suffering, or killed, unless they were harmful. If an animal is to be slaughtered as food, it should not be slaughtered in front of other animals since this would cause them anguish.